wow, 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 um, wow, you know, <laughs> I went through a whale of emotions in this race, started with excitement, curiosity, to then defeat, sadness, to then excitement again, intrigued, back to curiosity, intense, like happiness, and then I I want to jump off a bridge. Like, what, what, this race was j just, oh my god, that, I can't even describe this race. This is how, that's how chaotic it was. Um, first of all, thank god Tyler Reddick won this race. He absolutely deserved this race. Um, which, to be honest, for a little bit, I honestly thought he wasn't going to get it because of just the lack of respect that went around in the entire garage. So much so that even the commentators called it out. Chase Elliott, Kurt Busch, I think also Cliff Boyer all said, I, even Mike Joy, I think, even went in and said, at this point in time, all respect goes out the window. You know, the, now it's just survival. They were acknowledging it, which is pathetic that they have to say that. They, they know that, listen, hey, Drivers aren't going to race with respect, and my golly, did they prove them right. They raced with zero respect in the final few laps. But it started out pretty interesting, pretty chaotic. Now, this was the first race since 2016 that will not include stage cautions. Since Homestead 2016, this race will not include stage cautions. And I, for one, recommend that NASCAR, if, you, if, you, if you're able to, just get rid of stage cautions as a whole, even on the ovals. I don't care. I don't care if people say, oh, I get a showing out. Shut up. That's part of a racing, all right? I don't care anymore. This race, to me, opened the Pandora's box of that old old school, old style NASCAR racing where unpredictable pit strategy, you really have to plan as you go. You can't really wait or uh, wait for a determined caution to really work around your strategy. The entire race from start to finish, you had tire strategy, comers and goers, and at the end of it, you even had a little bit of fuel strategy come into play. I loved it. It just, even for as chaotic as it was, there was still that natural flow of things. There was that natural progression, which I absolutely loved uh, when watching a race. When I like seeing with F1 and with IndyCar, I like seeing that natural flow and progression of a race. I felt that again with NASCAR. I hadn't felt that in since 2016 <laughs> was the last time I really felt that natural progression of a race. Uh, this was very entertaining before all hell broke loose. We're going to get to that in a minute, but... Uh, from a racing, pure racing perspective, before those final few cautions that came out near the end of the race, I thought it was very entertaining. And I think this shows that NASCAR, you need to get rid of stage cautions. I think this is a good move. This was a great decision that NASCAR made. And if you can, uh, if you can get rid of stage, ca stage cautions everywhere, not just for road courses, either implement that now or in 2024, I don't care. But get rid of stage cautions because this proved that NASCAR don't need stage cautions to put on a good race. But what NASCAR does need, though, is some driver etiquette because holy crap, the ending of the race was... Ugh. But we had to figure out how did we get here. Now, again, the race started out very chaotic. Lap one right off the bat. Kozlowski lost a car on, in turn 19. Ty Dillon threw that whole chaos. He got turned, slammed into Jimmy Johnson, uh, Dillon and Johnson out of the race within a lap. But then after that, we started to get adjusted to who were going to be the top contenders. We knew that Tyler Reddick was going to be fast. We also had a feeling that Byron would be quick as well. He did qualify on the pole, but I'm pretty sure a lot of people were certain that Tyler Reddick was just going to was just going to blow by everybody and win this thing like it's nothing. But he didn't. It was really the entire race. It was down between Reddick and Byron. Byron had the straightaway speed but man, Reddick had the braking like no other. He could dive bomb a quarter, a corner better than anybody on the grid. Byron won stage one on a restart. Reddick won stage two. Those two were just going back and forth. In the meanwhile, everything behind them was pure and utter chaos. There were a lot of drivers that were cutting corners, cutting the S's. Some drivers just wrecking into each other. I think in the first stage, you had four or five drivers. I think Logano, Hamlin, uh, LaJoy, McDowell, I think a couple others got penalized, had to do a pit road penalty, had to go on pit road for cutting the S's, which you're not allowed to do that. If you do that, you have to do a pass-through penalty. So a lot of drivers are getting caught through that. Some drivers getting into each other, just taking each other out, like on lap 12. Something happened with Bubba Wallace. I don't know what happened, if he lost brakes or what, 
but it looked like he did his car didn't even stop to try and make the corner just sideswipes eric jones and kyle larson uh larson's day was basically basically done bubba wallace was out due to an oil line issue um i know there are a lot of people complaining about that before i get into it i know it's a bit it's a bit interesting that the car that bubba wallace hits this is Kyle Larson. If you go back to Las Vegas last year, those two had a bit of history there. Um, people that are going after Bubba Wallace, I'm just saying. Same thing happened with Kyle Larson at the Indy Road Course last year. The same exact thing. So, yeah. Uh, bringing up he can't drive because of that moment is stupid. Anyways, I digress. But, yeah, like I said, drivers were taking each other out. Kazowski and Blaney had their little squad going on, which is typical you see on a road course. Just drivers either locking up, getting loose, whatever, running into each other. Typical NASCAR road course racing, especially at a track like Coda. But the main question was, is Tyler Reddick and Byron, who was going to win this race? Or more specifically, can Byron stop Reddick? Or could anybody stop Reddick? Because it didn't matter what strategy Reddick was on. Reddick was on a three-stop strategy. A lot of other cars wanted two-stop stop strategy. Even with that, Reddick would just drive his way up to the field. He even had a gap so big that after he pitted, two or three laps later, he was back out in front. I mean, his car was just unstoppable. Nobody could catch up with him. But on lap 41, Things got a bit interesting. In turn number nine, a lot of drivers were getting their tires in the grass, kicking up dirt onto the racing surface. Obviously, dirt is like ice, especially at that part of the racetrack. NASCAR was forced to put out a caution. On a restart, Logano stayed out since he pitted a couple laps earlier. Meanwhile, Reddick overshot turn number one, giving the lead to William Byron and Ross Chastain. And then we would see a great, great duel with Byron and Reddick. And something that we haven't seen, I think, in quite some time at NASCAR, very clean, respectful, aggressive racing. Most importantly, clean. Those two went after each other. Reddick crosses over Byron for the lead in 11. Then you had Byron tries to make the corner turn 12, keeps the lead. But Reddick and Byron side by side through the stadium section. Byron keeps the lead off of turn 20. Reddick again dives under Byron in turn one, but cannot clear him into turn two. Reddick outbreaks Byron into 12 and takes the lead, pushing William Byron up the track on the exit on the corner exit. I mean, the last the entire one or two laps. Again, Coda is very long. So one or two laps at Coda is extremely long. They just would not let go of each other. Anytime Byron got out, Reddick finds a way to get back on the inside. And then you know, Reddick takes the lead. Byron crosses underneath. I mean, it was amazing how good this battle was especially how clean this battle was um and at this point around this point in time this race in my opinion was race of the year maybe the second if not the best next gen car so far next gen race so far maybe outside the 22 coke 600 it was that good and then in the last 17 or so laps you throw in a bit of fuel strategy in the mix since the top two couldn't make it on fuel they were one or two laps short while the track house guys of chas saying and this time daniel suarez they were good to go so in the closing laps, Byron slips off at turn number nine. That allows Suarez to just bulldoze through the field. He then even shoves his teammate Chastain out of the way to move into second place to now have a four-car battle for the lead and a new contender in Suarez trying to challenge uh, Tyler Reddick. And then that is when everything went down the drain. 11 laps to go. Again, in turn number nine, Brad Kozlowski has an axle issue, either you know something, uh, something wrong with the axle, stops. In turn number one, nine, forces NASCAR, NASCAR to bring out the caution. And again, it was then when just everything went. <laughs> because from that point on, and again, I acknowledge it earlier, even the broadcast booth said that driver respect, driver etiquette, that all goes out the window. Ten to go. Of course, everyone in a turn number one. Drivers run into each other. Caution. And with seven to go, it was actually kind of a clean restart. Byron was able to actually get out ahead of Tyler Reddick. And there was a really good squat between those two. Reddick was just able to hang on in there to put pressure on Byron. And ultimately, Reddick was able to take the lead back and drove away until three to go. When Austin Dillon brought a caution for debris when his left rear tire was coming apart onto the racing surface. I'm not going to go over the restarts. I'm just going to say there were three attempts. Three overtime attempts, which, yes, I know in years past, there were only three attempts to agree by checker, but still, just just how stupid they were driving. I mean, every single, and it was the same thing, same thing, turn number one, three, four, five wide in there, just bulldoze the guy in front of you, take each other out. Uh, I think Chastain was stuck, like he was stuck, spun around. You had another driver, I think Ryan Blaney also had parts, pieces offline, brought out another caution. He also then had Christopher Bell, that was, his front end was smashed up, Priest's front end was smashed up, I mean... 
by the by, what, by the time overtime three happened, I was just like, I'm done with this race. Like, I don't I don't care about this race anymore. Uh, but thankfully, thankfully, Tyler Reddick was able to hold off. You know, Byron, Kyle Busch, Bowman, Chastain, and those guys off to win as Circuit of the Americas, his fourth career Cup Series victory, his first win in 23-11, his third win on a road course, and is also 23-11's third career victory. And it's the third time that the 45 car has gone the victory lane and within a 12-month span, less than 12 months with three different drivers, Kirk Busch, Kansas last year, then later in the year in Kansas with Bubba Wallace, and now with Tyler Reddick. Here's a look at the results. Tyler Reddick wins. Kyle Busch, second. Bowman, third. Chastain and Byron, the top five. Austin Sendrick, sixth. Senhouse Jr., seventh. He also spun early in the race. Comes back seventh. Busher, eighth. Gibbs, he went through the S's. I mean, he had two uh, pit road violations. I mean, I think one, he was speeding on pit road. And the other two, I believe, he cut through the S's. So he had that pass through a penalty. Still came home to finish in the top 10. Todd Gillen, top 10 finish for him. Corey LaJoy, 11th. Then you have Michael McDowell, Kevin Harvick, Kyle Larson. Somehow, Larson finished 14th. I don't know how, but he finished 14th. Briscoe, Denny Hamlin, he also spun earlier, had a just bad race overall. Trex Jr. also spun 17th. Jensen Bunn, top 20 for him. Justin Haley and Noah Gregson, the top 20. And then the other drivers behind him, they were all caught up in wrecks. I mean, Blaney, Harrison Byrne, Jones. Jordan Taylor was also caught up in a couple wrecks. Uh, near the end of the race, Cody Ware, Josh Balicki, Daniel Suarez was, was involved. And I think in the last NASCAR overtime restart, Joey Logano also involved. Kimi Raikkonen had a 30-second time penalty because he cut through the S's. Eric Amarola, Christopher Bell, Ryan Priest, Austin Dillon, A.J. Allmendinger, Brad Keselowski, Connor Daly had a mechanical failure. And then Bubba Wallace, Jimmy Johnson, and Ty Dillon uh, uh, rounds out the 39-car field. Um yeah, just I think I I think I've exaggerated my point. Just driver etiquette, absolutely horrendous, absolutely horrendous. I mean, if you were to tell me what would I give this race before that incident with Kislowski, I would have given it a nine, nine and a half out of ten. It was, in my view, that good of a race. It had everything you want in a race, I think. But wow, after that, I'm I'm bumping it to, I'll bump it to an eight. I'll bump it to an eight. Uh, but it's like a, a B it's a B it's like an 80.80 like you're on the cusp because that was absolutely pathetic those last few laps I mean we all knew what was gonna happen but we were still hoping at least I was still hoping that just maybe they're they were gonna be nice with each other nope absolutely not um the commentary was interesting because you had Mike Joy Gunter Steiner who didn't really talk at all which I think was a good thing because number one he has a very like very thick accent. Not many people, I think, could understand him. And also, he's an F1 guy. I not really know much about NASCAR. He was a part of the NASCAR team but in 05, 06, 07. But, you know, uh, I it was nice that they gave him questions for him to answer instead of just having him say something. Um, but they also had Kirk Busch, Clint Boyer, and a little bit Chase Elliott. Elliott did a pretty good job, I think, uh, in his remote studio in Colorado to give some information. Kurt Busch, I'm not surprised. Kurt Busch was really good on the broadcast booth. And Fox, I'm just saying, maybe, you know, I know you got Kevin Harvick joining, but I think having Mike Joy, Harvick, and Kurt Busch on the booth would be a really underrated pairing. But um, it was interesting. Well, with Kurt Busch, I want to bring him up a little bit. It was interesting to hear him uh, get choked up a little bit on the radio or on the final lap of the race. Take a listen. It's amazing, 2311, and how fast we're growing, and how how much we're doing together. It's forward together on this program, and it brings brings me a little bit to be choked up. I was hoping to be back in that car, but it's in good hands, and it's a great team, and I love racing with those guys. I think that says a lot about how much Kurt Busch cares about 2311. Um, he even even uh, when Bubba Wallace, because Bubba Wallace gave an interview uh, after he crashed, and he was. Very down on himself. He even says something along the lines of he should be replaced. And Kurt on the on the calls, you know, you know, try to pick him back up, said everything was gonna be fine. You know, he's in good hands. So uh it says a lot about Kurt Bush's character from 2023 compared to 2013, 10 years ago, how much Kurt Bush has changed as a person. As a now from a driver to a team player with 2311 racing, having Kurt Bush as the mentor guy, this team I think is going places with Tyler Reddick, Tyler Reddick is generational talent, I think, and how well of a job, how and how great of a job he did at running this race. Even with all the chaos, he still kept his nose clean, raced clean respectfully, and was able to get the job done. 
This 2311 team, both the 23 and the 45, with Kurt Busch at the helm as the mentor guy, this team is going to go places this year. Uh, you know, 20, with Bubba, they got to you know work some things. They had some things not go their way. But I think if those two can work together, you know, have solid races, they're going to be a threat for the future. And with Kurt Busch at the helm of being the mentor guy of things, with Denny Hamlin being part owner, this team is going places. So I'm very excited to see what 2311 can do for the future, not only this year, but for future seasons to come. Um, you even had some moments even after the race where Daniel Suarez was so frustrated he not only moved his teammate out of the way, coming onto pit road, but also was hitting Alex Bowman on pit road. Him and Bowman had a talk, no confrontation. But then also Suarez and Chastain had a bit of a confrontation. Now, I won't be surprised if something comes out of this. Maybe a fine or some type of, you know, some type of penalty because Suarez hitting Bowman on pit road like that when there's people around. Not safe. Not safe at all. Um, I won't be surprised if NASCAR does something about this. If they do, in the meantime, they should do something about driver etiquette because I'm still frustrated that at the finish of that race. Um, I don't know what. Maybe just be more harsh on the reckless driving or uh, track limits. I don't know. I honestly don't know, but... Man, that ending of the race, it left a bad taste in my mouth. As good as the first 80% of the race was, and it really was so much fun to watch, that last 20%, those last 10 or so laps were just garbage. Um, but I give an 8 out of 10. I would have given a 9.5, but that drops it down to an 8. But what are your thoughts on the race? I'm assuming you, well, what'd you think? Did you like it? I know a lot of y'all liked the first half, but I'm sure no one liked what happened at the end of it. But what are your thoughts on Reddick, Byron, that battle that they had? I thought that was really entertaining, really good battles. Um, I mean, with the storylines, with the road course ringers, I'm surprised they didn't do much. I was expecting more from Raikkonen, considering how good he was. He was pretty good at Watkins Glen. And considering he has more experience at Coda, I thought he'd be a lot better. He was nowhere near the top 10. He did well, he was in fourth place on a restart, but then got kicked back to 17th because of turn one. But outside of that, Raikkonen was, wasn't really a factor anywhere in the top 10 or really maybe in the top 15. It was mostly just outside the top 20. Uh, Button was around the top 20 as well. Even Jordan Taylor, he had some moments, you know, in the top 12, top 15 for a little bit. But again, ended up finishing outside the top 20 and 24th. But, uh, yeah, rough day for road course ringers, um, but yeah, I'm done with this race. <laughs> Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more content. Until next time, my name is Jet from MDK. Congratulations to Tyler Reddick, your winner at Circuit of the Americas. <laughs>